How are you folks doing? James Clem here out at my clinical digital studio. It's snowing outside, but I'll tell you, it's sure warm inside this studio. And I wanna to talk to you about finishing green zirconia. There's a plethora of zirconias available for those that are using CEREC, the Prime Scan and the Prime Mill. That combination is extremely proficient and very high quality. When I go back just a few years and I think about what we had to use, we had mainly three Y, we didn't really have a lot of aesthetics, and so the zirconia chair side kind of had its challenges. Now we have these multi-layered blocks with different layers of strength. We have incisal, our cuspal translucency. It's just amazing where we've gone. And the zirconia blocks that are available to us in our portfolio for chair side CAD CAM is enormous and it keeps growing. I'm gonna talk about Prime by Aviclair. I have fallen in love with this material, mainly because it's very robust, it's very aesthetic, and we can also use it for strength as well. When we want to optimize the aesthetic with Prime, we're gonna take the restoration in the block and move it to the top of the block when you're in the manufacturer screen. With that, you'll have a beautiful incisal or cuspal translucency. The minimal aesthetic thickness is 800 microns. Now, when we're in a second molar and we have minimal room and we want that muscle, what we're gonna do is move that restoration to the bottom of the block in the manufacturer screen and our minimal thickness for that is 600 microns. That's the three Y component of the block. So this block is fulfilling almost all the purposes I need with zirconia when I'm working in my CERC clinical theater. My preferences for most of what I restore in the mouth is ceramic. I do use zirconia for these reasons. Number one, subgingival, particularly with people that have subgingival decay. I see that more in my adult patient. I'm gonna go with zirconia or and when I have that really robust occlusion, I don't have a lot of room, I'm gonna reach for zirconia. When I'm working in the poster region of the mouth, I prefer mainly polish. I don't use a lot of stain and glaze, and when I do, it will be more in the aesthetic zone. This video will demonstrate the approach that I use in my clinical theater when I'm applying zirconia posteriorly. I usually don't stain and glaze, I like that polished, Finish. Particularly with the biocompatibility of zirconia, I really see great responses with the tissues, particularly when I'm having to reach under the gum line to finish those margins. Anteriorly, I will use stain and glaze. My preference there is meal aesthetic. It's actually a liquid ceramic. I'm to the point now where I can mix zirconia in with ceramics and have them blend fairly well. So we have a lot of options in our zirconia applications today. This video is about finishing that green zirconia. So we're gonna go through the steps, particularly to put on surface texture and get that pre-luster finishing. So when it comes out of the centering furnace, there's not a lot to do. It almost looks as though it's ready to go. So all we do is a final luster polish once it's out of the furnace and we're ready to go. One thing nice about the Prime, particularly when you're applying it to the CS6, is that we have a 15 minute cycle, which really comes in handy for those same day restorations and the restorations look really good. My criteria for shade selection will be about two shades darker block than my intended shade. So if I want an A1, I'm gonna go with least an A3 or an A3.5. Let's get started with finishing green zirconia, such as cutting off the sprue to make sure we protect that zirconia so it never drops on a lab bench. That's when these can crack and you'll see it once you fire it. And then often I will refine the occlusion, not a lot. One thing I really enjoy about finishing green zirconia is placing in that texture and then neutralizing the texture with polishers and then getting that pre-centering luster. So when it comes out of that furnace, it's pretty much ready to go. All we do is a light polish and get that in the mouth when I'm working posteriorly. The technique is the same for all different brands. So let's go ahead and get started with finishing green zirconia. Separating the restoration from the block. This is on the JK04 Meisinger lab kit for zirconia. This is a carbide. We want to hold that restoration so it doesn't drop on the lab bench and potentially get a fracture on the margin or the whole restoration. We proceed with the point carbide burr to smooth down the attachment zone and we'll get that nice and smooth with a RPM of around 10,000. I prefer to do some detailing of the restoration. This is a needle diamond on the JKO4 Meisinger lab kit. Some refining of 
the primary grooves and secondary grooves creates just a little more definition in the restoration. And once this is centered, it really has a more natural look down there in the depths of those primary and secondary zones on the clusal table and the axial grooves that separate the cusp. And don't forget the cusp of Carabelli if you wanna add that in. That's a fun exercise to do. The next larger pointed diamond is excellent for texturing. The diamonds are a little larger and this is on the JK04 lab kit. Those larger diamonds create a nice surface texture. Now remember, what we want to do here is add the surface texture. It's going to look a little too robust. We're going to come back with a polisher and neutralize the texture to get that nice natural look. The pink polishing twist is excellent for neutralizing and smoothing the green zirconia. It's soft enough where it's not going to gouge zirconia. You can take that clear down to the margin without chipping a margin as well. Use it on the textured area to neutralize the texture and achieve a more natural look. When polishing the proximal zone, keep the polished cervical to the interproximal contact. So at this point in time, we're not polishing the contact interproximally. We don't want to lighten up the interproximal contacts at this point. We'll polish that area with the next polisher. You will find that the pink twist polisher is fairly soft and it will reach really well down into the groove zones on the occlusal table. Just a really light pressure is all that is required. Our next step is to use the beige polisher. This is the luster polisher that will bring a fairly high luster on the pre-centered zirconia. This we can use on the interproximal contact. It will create a very smooth surface. So once fired, it almost looks as though you're done with the polish. This is a very expedient way to process zirconia chair side. It's a lot easier to polish before we center than after, particularly in these textured zones and on the clusal table and those primary and secondary groove areas as well as the triangular ridges. out of the furnace you'll see there's a fairly nice luster finish this was accomplished on the pre-centering finishing technique now what we're going to do is take the coarse twist on the JK04 zirconia lab kit outside of the proximal contacts we want to go ahead and polish all the external and occlusal surfaces Quite often on the buckle surfaces and the whole restoration, if we finish with the green, it won't create that pearl effect. As you can see here, we can also move to the next level of polishing. The medium polisher is the blue polisher. You can see that's a fairly large twist. It works very efficiently 
This will add a higher sheen and at this point we can polish the proximal surfaces without opening up those contacts. I have found that even with this level of polish, it will avoid that pearl look. And quite often, this is the last level that I'll use in the zirconia polishing sequence. A well-polished occlusal table on zirconia will wear the opposing dentition less aggressively than a class 4 gold. That's in the literature. When using a diamond paste with a stiff Robison wheel, the best action is a plunging action that's releasing the bristles down into depth of those grooves and it will efficiently polish those areas. There will be a few more videos in the future that will provide other options of finishing zirconia like infiltration. I still will use that when I have situations where I need to really make zirconia blend and maybe there's more saturation at the cervical side. I prefer to use infiltration for that rather than just stain and glaze. And then when we do add stain and glaze, I like the meal aesthetic. It's more of a liquid ceramic that we can place on our zirconia surfaces, usually just the labial or the exposed area. We do get better function when the occlusion is functioning on polished zirconia. So I prefer that with my functional surfaces of zirconia. When we do need that aesthetic, the meal aesthetic liquid ceramic does work really well. And that will be coming in some other videos real soon. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. I really appreciate you folks watching these videos and I love your responses. You folks take care now. Bye.